Right now at noon, the governor shares his plans when it comes to decriminalizing recreational marijuana. And Southwest Airlines declaring an operational emergency after a high number of planes are taken out of service. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for joining us. Madison remains under a snow emergency declaration until tomorrow morning. That means alternate side parking rules are in effect for the entire city, including the Isthmus. Drivers are asked to use off-street parking when available. We saw another record-breaking snowfall for the day yesterday with more than 5.4 inches of snow falling at the airport. Let's get a check of your first alert forecast now. Mr. Snowman, Chris. Sick of the snow yet? <laughs> I'm not sick of it, but I am content. If it never snowed again, I wouldn't complain. Well, at least this winter, I would not complain. Uh, but yeah, we have had a lot of snow around here lately, and I'll tell you what, the view behind me is a welcome change for a lot of folks, seeing a lot more in the way of some of that sunshine out there. The temperature 20, so we have warmed up pretty well. That's good news. Wind st still coming out of the north northeast at about six miles per hour. Temperature is 27 right now in Janesville, 23 in Waukesha. You work your way back towards the north and west, and things are at least a little bit cooler. But yeah, you're right, Mark. Yesterday was a daily snowfall record. We had 5.4 inches of snow at least at the airport. Some folks on the west side got as much as seven or eight inches of snow, but the airport on the east side, they got a little bit less snow. So 5.4 is what officially goes down as our total. The old record was 4.9 inches all the way back in 1975. But some of these other areas, uh, Shorewood Hills got six and a half inches of snow, six inches out in Cross Plains as well. Beaver Dam only got two 0.5 inches of snow. We'll see those temperatures stay in the 20s, cooling down overnight. A little bit of cloud cover, though, before more sunshine in 20s on Tuesday. And then here we go again. We'll talk about that coming up <laughs> in just a moment. But let's just say Wednesday is an alert day, and I will have those details because I'm sure everyone wants to know how much more we're going to get. <laughs> I think I got more than 5.8 inches in my driveway. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you what, in Mount Horeb, it was a lot more than 5 inches yeah, as well. Yeah, a lot yep. of snow. All right, <laughs> bear with it. Thank you, Chris. We'll see you in a few minutes. Investigators are trying to see if the weather caused a semi to crash into Mirror Lake. The truck went off the 10-story cliff and was submerged in water. One person has already been confirmed dead. A dive team is now searching for the body of a second person. An autopsy scheduled for the driver who was recovered inside the semi truck. Governor Tony Evers announced today his budget will include proposals to decriminalize possession of small amounts of marijuana for personal use and legalize medical marijuana. Evers said it was time Wisconsin joined more than 30 other states and the District of Columbia in legalizing medical marijuana. Possession, manufacturing, or distribution of marijuana in amounts of 25 grams or less should be decriminalized. The governor's proposal would also establish an expungement procedure for individuals convicted of possessing, manufacturing, or distributing less than 25 grams of marijuana who have completed their service, their, their sentence, that is, or probation. It's unclear if the Republican-controlled legislature will approve the plan. Some Dane County voters will head to the polls tomorrow for the 2019 spring primary. There are no statewide contests on the ballot, but there are several big local races like Mayor of Madison, Madison School Board, and Fitchburg City Council. This will be the first time that Dane County will have both Spanish and English ballots at every polling place. The general election is April 2nd. You can find out more about the Madison mayoral candidates and Tuesday's election at channel3000.com. Andrew McCabe, the former acting director of the FBI, says he opened counterintelligence and obstruction of justice investigations into President Trump after the president fired FBI Director James Comey. McCabe talked about those decisions with Scott Pelley in an interview that aired on 60 Minutes last night. Natalie Brand is at the White House with more from that interview and President Trump's reaction. Andrew McCabe says President Trump's decision to fire FBI Director James Comey, who was at the time leading an investigation into Russian election interference, is what triggered a new bureau investigation into the president in May of 2017. A crime may have been committed. 
president may have been engaged in obstruction of justice in the firing of Jim Comey. McCabe, who took over as acting director of the bureau following Comey's firing, said Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein offered to help try and determine if the president got rid of Comey in order to quash the Russia investigation. In the context of that conversation, the Deputy Attorney General offered to wear a wire into the White House. He said, I never get searched when I go into the White House. I could easily wear a recording device. They wouldn't know it was there. The White House says McCabe was discredited when the Department of Justice determined he lied to DOJ investigators about an FBI leak to a newspaper. McCabe was fired just days before his retirement. President Trump tweeted this morning, wow, so many lies by now disgraced acting FBI director Andrew McCabe. He was fired for lying and now his story gets even more deranged. He and Rod Rosenstein, who was hired by Jeff Sessions, another beauty, looked like they were planning a very illegal act and got caught. I believe I was fired because I opened a case against the President of the United States. McCabe denies intentionally misleading FBI investigators and says he's considering suing to get his retirement benefits. And Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. And the Department of Justice is considering criminal charges against McCabe for lying to the FBI. Southwest Airlines faces what its own manager is calling an operational state of emergency. A number of Southwest Boeing 737s are being taken out of service for maintenance. In a memo obtained by CBS News, the airline called for all hands on deck, warning maintenance employees, warning maintenance employees they could be fired for unexpected or unexcused absences. The increase in out-of-service planes follows a CBS News investigation into mechanics' complaints of undue pressure to put aircraft back in service faster. Advocacy groups are trying to get more money to help care for Wisconsin's elderly population. Those advocates say nearly 400 Wisconsin nursing facilities are facing a crisis because of a shortage of workers and the state's low Medicaid reimbursement rate. Now, health care organizations are asking lawmakers to set aside $83 million to help facilities cover costs and avoid closures over the next two years. Since 2016, 27 skilled nursing facilities have closed, including eight so far this year. Well, there's more to come on News 3 at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. This President's Day, we're sharing some of our past president's all-time favorite foods.
It's President's Day, a day to celebrate U.S. presidents. And since we're all about food here in the Test Kitchen, we decided to do a bit of research on some of our president's favorite dishes. Here's what we discovered. Our country's first president, George Washington, loved all kinds of fruits and preserves, especially cherries. Former President James Madison craved his wife Dolly's soft gingerbread. Rumor has it, it was to die for. Those who had a chance to dine with FDR knew that he loved cream chip beef, as well as, believe it or not, donuts. Ronald Reagan's all-time most requested snack was jelly beans, while Bill Clinton has always had a real passion for chicken enchiladas. So after all that searching around, the one recipe that really stood out was President Lincoln's favorite dessert created by his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln. It's been called her seduction cake, since she used it as a way to make Abe fall in love with her while they were courting. It's simply a from scratch cake loaded with ground almonds and finished with a basic white icing. To get the recipe, just go to mrfood.com and search Mary Todd Lincoln's presidential cake so you can have one of Abe's most desired desserts as soon as tonight. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, wishing you a President's Day filled with lots of, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. Now it's time to start thinking about your plant and garden questions. Lisa Briggs and the Bruce Company will be along in just a bit. And the sun is shining after another day of record-breaking snow. Chris Reese joins us after the break with our first alert forecast. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your uh, problems. Call 608-270-2833. It's open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. One tech giant is planning to go public and more troubles for Facebook overseas. Here's Tom Hansen with today's Money Watch report.
Uber is reportedly gearing up to go public. An IPO for the online ride-hailing service is widely expected in the coming months. With that in mind, Uber just revealed some of its key financial data from 2018. The good news, the company booked $50 billion in rides and meal deliveries last year. And now for the bad news, that wasn't enough to keep Uber out of the red. It posted a $1.8 billion loss. And a jury has awarded more than $151 million to a man paralyzed in 2015 for a rollover accident involving a Ford Explorer SUV. Traveris Smith was riding in the SUV when its driver swerved to avoid an animal and the vehicle rolled over. The jury found the 1998 Ford Explorer did not meet Ford's own safety guidelines and that Ford acted wantonly in designing the vehicle. Ford says it plans to appeal. And Facebook is under fire in the UK after the company intentionally and knowingly violated both data privacy and anti-competition laws. That's according to British Parliament. In a report, they alleged that Facebook would willingly override its users' privacy settings to access personal information used to increase its revenue. This is the latest in a growing number of legal and political investigations for the tech giant. Facebook denied it had broken any laws in the UK. And the sci-fi fantasy Alita Battle Angel topped the box office in its debut. The James Cameron-produced film outperformed expectations and earned more than $27 million. In second place, the Lego Movie 2, the second part, earning more than $21 million at the box office. And Isn't It Romantic took the number three spot, making more than $14 million. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com at the CBS Broadcast Center. I'm Tom Hansen. Thank you, Tom. No stock or egg markets because of the holiday, but Chris Reese is here working, watching the snow coming. Yeah, watching the next one and talking about the one that we received just yesterday, Mark, that set some records, at least for us here in Madison. Some folks experienced six and a half or seven inches of snow, especially on the west side of town. Here in Madison, which is also Maple Bluff, that's where the airport is, we got 5.4 inches of snow. That 5.4 is a daily snowfall record. A daily snowfall record is just the most amount of snow to ever fall on a particular date. And so that was 5.4 inches for us yesterday the previous record 4.9 inches back in 1975 but here's the deal you see the pink curve whoop there we went and our snow just really added up as we've gone through the past couple of weeks now at 46.4 inches and typically in a season we see 50.9 so we are uh, four and a half inches away from our normal seasonal snowfall I have a feeling that this time next week we will have surpassed that. There is more snow on the way. In the meantime, enjoy the sunshine that we do have out there. Crystal blue sky. The temperature 20 right now. Winds out of the north and northeast at 6 miles per hour. 27 as you work your way down towards Janesville. Camp Douglas at 20. 18 towards La Crosse. Here's the deal. There is just a little bit of wind out there. So some of us are dealing with at least small wind chills. It feels like 12 here in Madison. We all know it could be worse. It's not terrible, but nonetheless, fairly chilly. Temperatures will top out around 23 and then come back down towards the single digits overnight tonight. In fact, we could see those lows just a couple degrees above zero, especially with a clearing sky. But we're already starting to watch this little disturbance over Kansas right now. That's the leading edge of what is going to eventually become our next snowmaker, especially as we go through time. Watch this low coming out of the south. Here we are as we get towards Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning. That next round of snow is going to be working its way into the upper Midwest. So let's come closer to home and take you hour by hour. Here we are at 2 a.m. Wednesday. You see that snow working its way on in here. This is one o'clock in the afternoon Wednesday. And yeah, there's a chance we might see some freezing drizzle in here. It's going to be a question of how far north we get that freezing drizzle to go. But this snow practically last most of the day. This is Thursday after midnight as well. The good news is it's not supposed to be a particularly heavy snow. It's going to be mainly on the light side, uh, but we could see as much as two to five inches of snow across the area, perhaps 4.2 inches here in the Madison area. That'll change through time to stay tuned to that, but the heaviest snow will likely be north and west of town. At least that's how it looks for now. So we do have an alert day on Wednesday 
for two to five inches of snow along with a small chance of freezing drizzle getting into the mix. And if that's not enough, this is Friday night into Saturday, a little light snowmaker coming in here and then perhaps rain going over to heavy snow and wind as we head from Saturday into Sunday. So we're going to be watching that as well, but that's why I think we could surpass our typical seasonal total by the time we get you towards this time next week, just because there are three more snow chances to come, all of which look to be the potential for accumulating snow as well. So one thing is for sure, winter is not over, but March 1st is an important date. That's 10 days away, but that is the start of meteorological spring. I'm not counting down, but I know a lot of other <laughs> folks are, and I just wanted to make sure that you gotta, had hope. Got to have, have some hope. <laughs> yes. Any, that, any sliver of hope. That is the hope, and get this, actual spring will start 30 days from today. All right. Hang in there. Thank yes, you. Thank everyone, you. just hang on. <laughs> Up next, Lisa Briggs with the Bruce Company is in the studio to take your plant and garden questions. 270-9933 is the number to call. We'll be right back. Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is here taking your calls at 270-9933. Thanks for bringing a little touch of spring. Hello. Yeah. You know, our next houseplant holiday, <laughs> now that Valentine's has passed us, shamrocks. These are, these are actual Saint shamrocks. Patrick, St. Patrick's Day. Yes, they're oxalis is the genus name Purple for leaves? shamrocks. Yeah, and there's another one that's green with some uh, red stripes in it. So we'll be pretty well supplied at the garden center for the next few weeks. So if you, that's how you celebrate St. Patrick's Day, come on in. Yeah, this, don't these close up at night? Yes, this is a prayer plant. I used to have one of these. It's, it's a nice cool. color on the leaves, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's real cool, and they close up at night. Mm -hmm. they, they roll up, and we've got some peperomias and some fun little ferns. All right, 270-9933, the number to call. Let's start with Avery from Argyle. Hi, Avery. Hi, thanks for taking my You're call. You're welcome. Um, say, I bought a 
amaryllis bulb, and the leaves came up just fine, but I never got any bloom off from it. Did I do something wrong or get a dud? Or Is it the first time? Yeah. Sometimes they don't get, depending on where you get them, they're not... Um, they don't go through their dormancy period. So you can get it to do it yourself. Um, leaves are up, uh, leave those alone, keep it uh, watered. Um, once we get to the first part of March, you can start doing a fertilizer program. And then when the weather gets nice, put it outside for the summer in a morning sun kind of location. And then you can start the dormancy period yourself and get it to bloom for um, for the next holiday. The bigger the bulb, the better with amaryllis. The bigger the bulb, the bigger the flowers. Okay. Let's go to, oops, Roseanne from Middleton. Hi, Roseanne. Hi. Hi, what's your question? I have a crown of thorns plant. The stems are getting long and rangy, and I'm wondering uh, if I would cut it, cut the stems off now in the spring. Is that going to hurt the plant, or what should I do? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that it's getting plenty of light. They are considered kind of in that sort of um, uh, succulent cactus family, so they need those kinds of conditions. Super high light, let it dry thoroughly between waterings. Um, so I guess it's, I would guess without seeing it, that it's stretching because of the light issue. So see if you can move it into a brighter window for the time being. Okay. And I guess that as far as cutting it or pinching it, I would wait a little bit before you do that. Um, we're still not in a time frame where plants are actively growing. It's probably another couple weeks away when we get closer to the first day of spring. So then you could do any trimming at that time, but I'd wait a few weeks. And house plants react to the length of day as well, don't they? Absolutely. And now that we're getting to that point where we're getting to close to equal day and night, um, plants will start perking up a little bit and you could start in probably early to late March, start working on your fertilizer program if you want to get things into flower, do any kind of corrective pruning that you need to do or pinching. That would be the time you start that. Also repotting if you're going to do some repotting. All right, um, we have time for one more call, I believe. Cindy from Stoughton, go ahead. Yes, hello. Um, I'm calling in regard to evergreen trees. With all the flooding that we had in this area, uh, the ground saturation was quite high and the water table was quite high as well. And we managed, managed to lose um, two evergreen trees as a result. And um, I'm just wondering far as what I can utilize for replacement. Um, I'd like the evergreen trees um, just so that I have something that... Um, All right. Cindy, I'm going to have to put you on hold because we're running out of, out of time. Don't hang up. Okay. All right. We're out of time. Sorry. I'll get Cindy on the, okay. on the we'll, back side. We'll have the answer next time. Yeah. Chris, final check of your forecast. Well, we are at least seeing some sunshine out there now. Behind me is Platteville, crystal blue skies out there. Expect those temperatures to top out around 23 degrees as we head through the afternoon. Tonight, pretty chilly, though. Expect those lows around, too. More snow chances do come in the days ahead. All right, Stephen, you're back here for have a great afternoon.